Hi, good afternoon, everyone. But in today's class, we will try to go ahead and we will try to understand duopoly with capacity constraints. Okay. So we are we are starting by understanding a basic Bertrand model. माने एक imagine करो कि एक basic Bertrand model है, and there are two firms producing homogeneous goods. And because it is a Bertrand model, firms are competing in prices. ठीक है. Firms का marginal cost आपको zero दिया हुआ है. Cost small c जो है, marginal cost जो है, that is given to you as small c, right? And there are ten consumers in the market, and each consumer is demanding one unit of the product. हर consumer जो है, it demands one unit of the product, right? And um, each consumer is willing to may pay at most one rupee. So these consumers, uh, these ten consumers that you have in the market, they are paying maximum of one rupee, right? Their their maximum willingness to pay is one rupee per unit. Okay, ten consumers each demands exactly one unit. माने दस unit produce करने हैं. And we are asking what is going to be equilibrium in this market how can the equilibrium be determined in this market now in order to go ahead and in order to determine equilibrium in the market we have already done bertrand model and what happens in the bertrand model we know that in bertrand model when there are only two firms with similar cost jinka cost ekdam same hota hai we have something which is known as bertrand paradox right so we have presence we have presence presence of bertrand paradox right and what does bertrand paradox go ahead and say beta bertrand paradox suggests that each firm will charge equal price Equal to marginal cost of production, which in this case is zero. Okay, so the price that will be set in the economy will be P one equal to P two equal to small c. Okay, ये हमारा Burton paradox हो जाएगा. Now what we are going ahead and what we are doing in this case is that we are introducing the concept of the capacity constraints. So now what we are doing is we are saying that each firm can only produce up to eight units. Okay, there are ten consumers. You need ten units in the market, but any one firm can only go ahead and can only produce up to eight units. That's the capacity constraint that we have. And uh, you know we want to prove that in this case, this case me there will be no pure strategy. Nash equilibrium. There will be no pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Okay. Now, uh, suppose let's start uh, by understanding that let's take the case that the firms charge the same price. Both no firms have same price. Rakhai. So just remember this thing. So the price that firms can set, it can be anything between zero to one, beta. वन से ऊपर तो नहीं चार्ज कर सकते यू के नॉट चार्ज मोर देन वन बिकॉज वन इज मैक्सिम विलिंगनेस टू पे ऑफ कंज्यूमर वन इज मैक्सिम विलिंगनेस टू पे ऑफ कंज्यूमर सो यू के नॉट चार्ज एनी प्राइस ग्रेटर देन वन यू कैन चार्ज ओनली अप टू वन एंड जीरो इज योर मार्जिनल कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन Now suppose both firms go ahead and they charge equal price between zero and one. Suppose दोनों ने half half रखा. So both firms P one and P two equal to half. So price is equal. So they will get the customers equally. So they will get five customers each. They will get five customers each. So we are saying that whenever firms will charge equal price, they will get same amount of customers. Both of them will have half of the market share. बट अगर किसी फर्म ने सो आई एम जस्ट कमिंग टू दिस फैक्ट इन अल बट लेट्स जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वट स्ट्रैटेजी प्राइस देन दे विल गेट इक्वल मार्केट शेयर दे विल गेट इक्वल मार्केट शेयर दे विल गेट इक्वल मार्केट शेयर एंड सेकेंडली इफ दीज फर्म्स दे सेट डिफरेंट प्राइजेस बेटा 
ठीक है तो जैसे मान लो ऐसा कुछ कर लेते हैं दैट फर्म आई प्राइस इज लेस देन फर्म जे इज प्राइस लेस देन इक्वल टू वन बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन तो फर्म आई विल गेट मोर कस्टमर्स बिकॉज इट इज सेटिंग अ लोअर प्राइस बट यहां पे वी आर गिवन दैट देर इज अ कैपेसिटी कंस्ट्रेंट सो देर इज अ कैपेसिटी कंस्ट्रेंट ऑफ एट कस्टमर्स दैट दिस फर्म कैन ओनली सर्व एट कस्टमर्स सो दिस सिंस दिस फर्म कैन ओनली सर्व एट कस्टमर्स सो वी नो दैट द रिमेनिंग टू रिमेनिंग टू कस्टमर्स इट विल गो टू फर्म टू Remaining two customers will go to the other firm. ठीक है? Okay. Now let's try to understand that there is no pure strategy in Nash equilibrium, and we want to understand why there is no pure strategy in Nash equilibrium. So I am beginning with case one, beta. Suppose we tell case one that both firms are setting a price equal to zero. दोनों फर्म्स ने जीरो प्राइस रखा है दैट मींस दैट दे आर फॉलोइंग बर्टर एंड पैराडॉक्स सो इफ बोथ फर्म्स सेट सेम प्राइस राइट एंड दे सेट अ प्राइस इक्वल टू जीरो तो व्हाट विल हैपन बेटा वेरी सिंपल इन दिस केस दे विल गेट हाफ ऑफ द मार्केट सो फाइव कस्टमर्स फर्म वन विल गेट एंड फाइव कस्टमर फर्म टू विल गेट बट वॉट इज द प्रॉफिट ऑफ ईच फर्म it will be zero because they are keeping price as zero and cost is also zero so there is no profit that they will earn so the firms will have firms will have incentive to deviate firms will have incentive to deviate to ye firm kya sochega firm to suppose फर्म टू विल थिंक दैट लेट मी कीप द हाइएस्ट प्राइस पॉसिबल विच इज वन ठीक है देन फर्म वन कैन ओनली सर्व एट कस्टमर्स एंड द रिमेनिंग टू कस्टमर्स विल हैव टू बाय फ्रॉम मी रिमेनिंग टू कस्टमर्स विल बाय फ्रॉम फर्म टू ये फर्म वन है राइट एंड आई विल स्टिल बी इन अ प्रोफिटेबल सिचुएशन बिकॉज फ्रॉम दीज टू कस्टमर्स आई विल get a revenue so profit is total revenue minus total cost so from two customers i will earn 2 rupees my cost of production is zero so i will earn 2 rupees and this 2 rupees is more than earning 0 rupees right so mane this is no more nash charging equal price equal to zero is not a nash equilibrium case two beta suppose both charge equal price equal to 1 they charge equal price equal to 1 so any one firm will have firm one suppose it can think that let me charge a price very less than 1 this i can charge 0.99999 when both are charging equal to 1 jab dono hi 1 rupee charge kar rahe hain they are getting the market equally they are sharing this market equally so this firm is getting five customers and this firm is also getting five customers so both firms are earning a revenue of five and hence profit is also five because cost is zero but by charging a very less price close to one what will this firm get it will get eight customers and it will get a profit more than 5 rupees so incentive to deviate is there right case 3 suppose p1 is equal to p2 but is less than 1 okay so let's say that both for example just i'm taking an example let's say that both of them are charging a price of half and they are selling to five customer each so both of them are earning 2.5 rupees each right then again they will have incentive to deviate this person will think that why am i selling to just five customers i will lower my price by a very small amount and i can cater to eight customers just i can lower my price to 0.4999 which is less than 0.5 
and I can cater to eight customers and I will be able to earn a profit more than the current profit. Here I am earning half rupees each from five customers. So I am earning 2.5 rupees because five is ko mil and five is ko. So there is incentive to deviate. Case four. Suppose P1 is less than P2 is less than 1. Suppose firm 1 is charging some price and it is less than firm 2's price. So firm 1 is getting 8 customers. Now when firm 1 has 8 customers mil hi rahe hai, and firm 2 can only get 2 customers, so firm 2 should charge the maximum price possible from these 2 customers. So firm 2 will charge a price of 1. Why will firm 2 charge a price less than 1? Just think about it. Now, suppose firm 1 has charged the price of half and firm 2 ne 0.6 rakha hai. So anyways, it will only get the remaining 2 customers. 8 customers will go to a cheaper firm. Okay. But if I just have to get 2 customers, why will I charge them 0.6? Why not charge the maximum willingness to pay? Right. So from them, I want to charge the maximum willingness to pay. So this is also not Nash. There is incentive if to deviate. And last case, case five. Suppose zero is less than P1, is less than P2, and P2 is one. Now this firm is charging exactly one. Right. So now also firm one will have incentive to deviate. So, whatever price it keeps, it will find a better price. Whatever price it keeps, it will find a better price. So, for example, in this case, let's say firm 1 is keeping a price 0 0.9 and firm 2 is keeping a price 1. So, it will want to increase its price to 0 0.99. It wants to go closer to this price, but not equal to 1. It wants to go as close to 1 as possible to increase its revenue, but not equal to 1. So, go as close to 1 as possible. What is that price? We don't know. It's a continuous function. So, as close to 1, but not equal to 1. Right? Firm 1 wants to charge as close to 1, but not equal to 1. And that price is not known. It is just 1 minus some very small epsilon. That price is not known. It's a continuous function. So there is no Nash equilibrium in this case also. So you find different cases, but you will find that there is no, there is no pure strategy Nash.